when you think of it, there's endless Christmas trees out here. You want to see it? Well, pff, go over there and look at it. If you want it, then I'll come over there. He would pick a dead one if he has to. <laughs> Haimo Korth, the ultimate frontiersman, stole our hearts with his incredible journey on the last Alaskans. While living off the grid, surrounded by raw nature, he captured the essence of survival and connection with the wild like no other. And since the show ended, Haimo Korth hasn't slowed down. From writing a best-selling book that chronicles his experiences to becoming an ambassador for wilderness preservation, he's continued to inspire countless individuals around the world. Most of his fans stay eager to know what Haimo did after his retirement. Is he still in the wilderness, or will he be coming with another show? So, let's explore what really happened to Haimo Korth from the last Alaskans. Where's the presents? <coughs> right here. Don't go Ooh. shaking them, gee whiz. See, grandma, 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 grandma. Yeah, right. Oh, grandma. It does look nice, Mom. <laughs> I got the biggest Give me present. <laughs> Haimo Korth was born on April the 17th, 1955 in Wisconsin, USA to Eric and Irene Korth. His childhood was not like a normal child. Soon, he decided to leave home due to a reportedly difficult relationship with his father who allegedly hurt him. This strained relationship prompted Haimo to seek a different path, so he started working as a welder to earn a living. In his 20s, Haimo made a bold and unconventional choice. He traveled to the Arctic wilderness and settled there to live a life far from modern comforts and conveniences. In the Alaskan wilderness, he became a subsistence hunter and trapper to rely on his skills to survive in the harsh environment. This decision to embrace a life of isolation and self-sufficiency eventually gained him attention and recognition. Upon arriving in Alaska, Haimo's transition was initially eased by his former boss in Canada, who allowed him to stay in a mountain cabin. However, the reality of the situation became apparent as the then 18-year-old faced the challenges of the harsh Alaskan winter. Haimo encountered difficulties such as depleting food supplies and even falling through the ice. The romanticized adventure he had envisioned quickly revealed its true hardships. Feeling lost and uncertain, Haimo penned a letter to his former boss, who responded generously with a $500 check and two choices – to purchase more supplies or to return to his job on St. Lawrence Island in the Bering Sea. Given his dire circumstances, it's understandable why Haimo opted for the latter option. Haimo settled temporarily in the Savunga village on St. Lawrence Island, where he encountered Edna. Details about Edna's background were scarce, but it was known that she was a native of the area and had been in a previous relationship with an unidentified man whom she had a daughter. This meant that there had been a romantic connection between Haimo and Edna for a period. Their story took a turn in the late 1970s or early 1980s, when after six years of acquaintance, Haimo and Edna's friendship blossomed into love, leading to their marriage. This marked the beginning of a significant life change. The couple moved into Haimo's newly constructed cabin in the remote North Slope region of Alaska, just as the Arctic refuge was on the verge of being established. Haimo's rise to public awareness came when his cousin, James Campbell, authored a book Book titled The Final Frontiersman, Haimo Korth and His Family, Alone in Alaska's Arctic Wilderness. It was published in 2004 and shed light on Haimo's unique lifestyle and his determination to live in one of the most remote and challenging environments on Earth. The book captured the imagination of readers and drew attention to Haimo's way of life. Haimo and Edna Korth had been living in the wilderness for decades. They settled in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in the 1970s and embraced a subsistence lifestyle, hunting, trapping and fishing to sustain themselves. Their self-sufficient and resilient lifestyle caught the attention of the producers of The Last Alaskans, who saw their story as a compelling addition to the show's narrative. The show, which aired on the Discovery Channel, followed the lives of several families and individuals who live in the remote and unforgiving Alaskan wilderness. It also included the Korth family's journey, including their interactions with wildlife, the challenges they face, and their commitment to preserving traditional ways of life. 
Due to their passion to live in the wild, this show greatly resonated with viewers. Moreover, it provided a glimpse into the harsh realities and breathtaking beauty of the Alaskan wilderness while showcasing the obstinacy and resourcefulness required to live in such an environment. Haimo and Edna's involvement in the show helped them share their experiences and values with a wider audience and allowed the viewers to gain a better understanding of the unique lifestyle they've chosen to pursue. The Last Alaskans gave the Korth family a chance to educate and entertain, showcasing the challenges of remote living in a harsh environment while shedding light on their unique way of life. Haimo and Edna Korth's deep connection with the land and their commitment to living off the grid were highlighted throughout the series. Their cabin, handmade tools, and reliance on natural resources illustrated their self-sufficient lifestyle. On the show, Haimo was shown passing down his skills and knowledge to his daughters, Rhonda and Kryn. He taught them essential survival skills such as hunting, trapping, and navigating the wilderness. More excitement came into the show when, over the seasons, various other participants visited Haimo and his family, forming a sense of community among the Laskans featured. These interactions provided insight into the different approaches to living in the wilderness. Throughout the series, Haimo shared stories and insights about Athabascan culture and history. He discussed the traditions, customs and values that shaped his family's way of life. So, his fans love to watch when his eyes lit up while talking about his culture and land. The couples face initial challenges when they move to their new home due to its basic living conditions. Haimo, being young at the time, didn't mind the rundown state of the house, which upset Edna. They worked together to fix things and get ready for their first winter, deciding that this was going to be their life now. Their happiness was tainted when their first daughter, Colleen Ann, was born on May the 29th, 1982. Tragedy struck when Colleen was swept away by the river during a canoe trip in mid-1984. Sadly, they never found her body. To honor her memory, they placed a memorial near the Colleen River, named after their daughter. Even though it's been 40 years since Colleen's passing, her parents still hold on to her memory with sadness. It's understandable, given how heartbreakingly she was lost. And despite their painful memories, they admirably persisted with their way of life. Their life in the Arctic wilderness is extremely tough. They spend most of their time getting ready for winter and surviving it. Food is not easy to find, so they have to search far and wide. They hunt animals like caribou, moose and small creatures, and they also gather plants, berries and roots. Fishing in the nearby river is also important. They chop a lot of firewood and carry water every day. To make sure they don't use up all the resources, they switch between different cabins every year. To get things they can't find in nature, Haimo sets up a trap line during winter to catch animals for their fur. He sells these furs to make money. He focuses on animals like marten, lynx, wolverines and beavers. Even during the dark Alaskan winter, Haimo and Edna work hard and stay busy. Haimo and Edna live far above the Arctic Circle, over 100 miles from any town or city, and about 250 miles away from the nearest road. Some might call them hermits, but that's not really true. They're friendly and sociable, just choose to live in a unique way. Haimo is over 60 years old now, but he doesn't want to leave his Arctic home. He plans to spend his whole life there, and despite the challenges of survival and continuous work in their harsh environment, Haimo and Edna appear remarkably content with their lifestyle. His net worth is nearly $180,000 that he made from the show and other ventures in the wilderness. Besides being a part of the show, the courts were also mentioned in Warrior's Creed, Moreover, they appeared on Braving Alaska, a documentary Surviving Alone in Alaska, and a show Flying Wild Alaska. Just like many others in the area, Haimo is not much active on social media, but there are plenty of people who admire him and want to know what he's up to. Even now, when he's famous for being really good at surviving in the wild, he tries to help young folks who want to learn the old-fashioned ways of living in nature. His passion to live in such a harsh environment, at the ripe old age of 68, tells us that he's really the man with nerves of steel.